So the blue one is not even a function because uh, it's not symmetric about the y-axis. Our function is symmetric about the origin. If I were to rotate this black graph 180 degrees, this should go back to the original graph. So those are our function. They're symmetric about the or original point, zero, zero. Which one, um, even or odd? Even, uh, even. As you can see right there, if I go to flip it around, this would match up with the original function. Right? Now, if someone say, maybe someone clicked odd, as you can see, if you rotate around the origin, it's not match up with the original. Right? So you know that it's not odd. This one, just like her. Hmm? Ah, right, ah. So this point, this point right here, the top, the this is the piece of frequency, by the way. Uh, the top is kind of mirror image about the origin at this point. Right? Um, it's ah. See, we rotate it in 180 degree. It should match it back to the original. This one right here. Even I right? flip it to match up the original. What about this one? <laughs> some say even, some say odd. Any other answer? Neither, right? Neither. Uh, let's say even is a, If I flip it, it's a match. Not quite, right? It's just kind of a little bit off. Um, a bit odd. No, it doesn't match, right? If you hold to have an degree, it's neither. So some functions are neither uh, odd nor even. What about this one? This one, this. Uh, All right, last exercise. We don't have to do 13. Um, that's for you to think about when you're at home next time. Think about, let's see, symmetry about the y-axis. Um, about this one, yeah. Kind of attach it to it. Let me move it up here, move it over here. Uh, what else, what about this one? Let me move this away. What about this one? That's the odd one, right? That's the odd. This one also odd. And move it. Oh, this one neither, so let's put over here. Because this one, what about this one? Neither, neither. Uh, this one. I don't even. Uh, hmm, this one. Neither. This one. Even. So you can get a, a grip of even and up. Today is even odd. Okay. Uh, number one will be odd, right? Odd. As you can see, take a look at the point four three and negative four negative three. They opposite, right? They opposite x, opposite y. Not always true, but in the in, in this picture. I don't know why this one. I charged it last night. Yeah, but there's a lot. There you go. Uh, this one is even. Even. 
and for for even function they symmetric or Cadillac. This is visually. Visually, when you look at the picture, algebraically, if I don't give you the picture and I ask you, can you prove the two functions are even? What did you do? You're going to prove that if you plug in negative x for the input, it should be equal to the original function. Okay, so f of negative x equal to f of x. That's how we prove it algebra algebraically. For our function, is symmetric about the origin, zero, zero. To prove this, we use f of negative x equal to negative f of x. Right, let, let's take a look at number two. Um, a partial graph is given. They want you to complete, they want you to uh, um, complete the graph if the function is even. Well, is, is symmetric, is mirror image about the y-axis. So um, even you don't know anything about math, you can just say, my other point will be there, right? What about this point? Where will it go? Yeah, right here. Uh, negative eight, negative two, negative eight, no, negative 10, two, right? Oh, oh okay. Uh, so negative eight, negative four. Mm -hmm. Very good. Can you connect them? And it makes sense, right? Here is f of two. Here is f of negative two. Are they equal? Yeah, they both equal to four, right? So f of negative x equal to f of x. So for a similar to other point, I'm not gonna write it, which is not too bad. Check for all points. What about graph number three? Well, if you're good at visually, you can just put plot the point yourself without knowing any math. Well, let's do some math. Let's do some math. Let's take a look at let's take a look at two first. So right here, f of two. So I want I want to know what happened at f equal two. I know that is equal to f of negative x, I know the odd function is f of negative x equal to f of, negative f of x, sorry, negative f of x. All right, let's plug it in. Let's plug in two for those, for, for x. So f of negative two, equal to negative f of two, what f of two equal? Four, right? So f of two is four. That's four, and then you bring down the negative. So negative four, f of negative two is negative four. So when, when x is negative two, when x is negative two, y is negative four. So right here. Can you find another one? I'm doing algebra. Kind of. You can eyeball it. Um, but it's helpful to know the, the math behind it. Uh, let's take a look at f of 8. When x equals 8, again, I do the same thing. And my, my, if it odd, then f of negative x. equal to negative f of x, and you plug it in, right? So f of, let me use red, uh, f of negative eight, equal negative f of eight. What's f of eight? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, f of, uh, yeah, yeah, negative four, you're right, negative four. Let me put the negative there so you can see it. Mm -hmm. So f of negative 
f of a is negative four, and then you bring down the negative, so it become positive four. So f of negative eight is positive four. Over here. Can you find me the other point? Let me show you how I do this. I can use my ruler because they're symmetric about the origin, right? You can do that. Uh, draw it. What do you got? Right here, right? No, 10. 10 is right. Here, sorry, right there. 10. F of, F of negative 10. Mm -hmm. Or you can do like I did. Plug in x equal 10. Let me remove that. Now I can connect these. There you go. But there's many ways to do this. If you're good visually, you can just plot it. If you don't, you're not good, you can use math. <clears throat> do you have any question on objective 1A? Objective 1B, we're going to determine odd and even function using algebra. Given, I'm going to go straight to B. Example, you can read it. 4B, f of x equal x squared plus x. I need to prove this. Is it odd or is it even? Let me remind you, if, if it even, then it even then f of x equal f of negative x. If I do that many, many times, it means you should know that for the exam. Um, let's plug it in. Let's, oh, well, I know f of x is x squared plus x, right? Let's, let's take a look at f of negative x. So f of negative x, and you, you, you replace x with negative x, so I, I see x, I see something squared plus something, and that something will be negative x instead of x. Uh, what's negative x parenthesis squared? Very good, x squared, positive x squared. Um, I forgot the negative there. Minus x. Is it equal to x squared plus x? No, right, no. That means it's not equal to what? F of X. So F of negative X is not equal to F of X. That means they're not even. Well, it's not even. What about odd? F of negative X, we need to prove F of negative X equal to negative F of X. Negative f of x mean what? You have a negative in front of a function and you, you kind of distribute it into the function, right? So negative one times x squared is. So like this. And then this is equal to negative x squared minus x. So that's f negative f of x. All right, let's now take a look at f of negative x. Do we have f of negative x? We did, right? Maybe we move over here. So negative f of x is x square minus x. Uh, f of negative x, we did that. We did that on the left side right there. So we can just copy all of it. We don't have to do it again. <clears throat> Are they equal? No, right? So, so f of negative x, so this mean, this imply f of negative x is not equal to negative f of x. So, so it's not odd either, so it's neither. So your answer will be either.
If you have questions, it's a good time to ask right now. I'll give you a moment just to absorb that. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm, good. Yeah, no, no. The so this is original, right? Let me get small. This right here, the original, yeah. F of X. What's F of X? Good. And then what do you do is you bring the negative down, that blue ne negative right here. And then you distribute the negative. Negative one time x squared is negative x squared. Yeah. And then negative one times x is negative x. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So f of negative x, yeah. um, we, uh, f of negative x, we did it over here already. So I don't, I, I, I don't feel like doing it again. So we just did it like a moment ago. This one, if this one, if it's the same thing, right? No, 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 no. You compared it. What do you want to compare? You want to prove it is odd. You need to follow this. The original function is your information to manipulate things around. Right? So if you want to prove it odd, you need to prove that one I have uh, circle in black. <clears throat> The original equation is just what you plug F of X, in. always F of X. The original equation always F of X. It's just what you plug mm -hmm. in. Yes, yes, what you plug in. And then you could plug in either F of negative X or negative F of X. What's negative F of X mean? It means what? Negative one time F of X, right? It's like negative X is negative one time. But we never ever write like negative one times x. We just can't say negative x. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that I just kind of bring it over right here. That's negative f of x. Yeah, I brought it over. Should I erase it? I erase it so you don't not confuse. Erase it. Erase it. It takes time. It takes practice. Take practice. Uh, I don't. I don't get to be able to swim the first time I my first lesson. <laughs> I still don't know how to swim well now. It's been like a year. Uh, it takes time. It takes time. Right. So do a lot of homework. You get there. Anything else? Objective two is we we want to take a look at the behavior of the graph. Uh, when they say behavior, they mean um, where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, and where it's constant, or sometimes even undefined. Right? The function is increasing. Let's take a let's talk about increasing function. If I have the function f, and I choose the interval a, b. a, b could be any number of b, from 3 to 5, negative 10 to 9, something like that. They call a, b um, in general. Then if a is less than b, if a is less than b, it means f of a is less than f of b. Think of a is your x1, b is your x2, f of a is your f of x1, and, or y1, and then f of b is your y2. Right? Then the function is increasing over the interval, and the slope of the segment is positive. It's increasing, right? So it's positive. So right here, makes sense, right? If you take a look at the picture, it makes sense. If a is less than b, a is on the left of b, then f of a, the height of the first function is less than the height of the second function. Then the function is increasing. If the function is decreasing, Again, I'm talking about the um, interval A, B. Then if I have F of A is greater than F of B, as you can see in the picture, I'm sorry, if F, if, if A is less than A is less than B, then F of A is greater than F of B. So it's kind of flip-flop. 
and the function is decreasing on the interval i. Um, the slope of the segment is decreasing. If the function is constant, horizontal, right? I think constant, I think cross country scheme, right? Um, there's no slope, slope is zero, right? Slope zero, f of a, everywhere at the same height, f of a equal f of b, everywhere on that segment is have, have the same height. Um, and the function is a constant on the interval and the slope is zero, m equals zero for any two point on that segment. So here slope is negative, here slope is positive. So far, so good. That's just theory. Local maximum and local minimum. Again, we talk about just segment. I'm not talking about the whole function, right? just the segment on, on that function. Um, if f is a function defined over the open interval, open interval means you use parentheses. Right? When we talk about interval, for increasing, decreasing, we always use parentheses, and I'll tell you why later. If if that point right there, f of c, is the local maximum, then it's the top of that segment. Does does that make sense? The highest point, the highest point on that segment. It, it's not necessarily the highest point overall, right? That's what they call local. If it highest point overall, they call global. Right. But we're not going to talk about global, we talk about local. So on that segment, it's the highest point. That's all you have to know. Okay. Simple as that. And I don't know what color to do. Um, for the And the function is what? Function is increasing. So as you can see right here, it's increasing. And it's stop. And it's kind of stopped at that black point right there. And then it's decreasing. Uh, the the Black point right there, um, we call it the local maximum. In calculus, they call it is the point of inflection. Right? It is neither max nor min, right? Uh, it is neither increasing or decreasing. That's why we always use parentheses for increasing, decreasing intervals. Because right? we cannot include what we cannot include that black point, right? It's not increasing nor decreasing. Function chain from increasing to decreasing. Um, local minimum is the lowest point on the segment. That's it. And the function changing from what? Increasing. Right, so it's decreasing right, right there, highlight in blue. And then at, at the point, we start going up, increasing. Do you have any questions so far? Because this is your you try. It's very easy. If you have something like this on the exam, I, I think it's easy. It's like those easy points that you should not make a mistake. Uh, 5A is easier than 5B. So I'm going to let 5A be your you try one. You try one today is Wednesday, the 18th. We'll, we'll, we'll do 5B together, and 5A will be very much the same. Slightly easier because we don't have to involve decimal. <clears throat> All right, 5B, the domain. What's the domain of my function? Yeah, everything, right? So from negative infinity. Positive infinity. What is my range? Good. Should I include negative seven? Yes. Right. So bracket to infinity. Do you have any question? Mm -hmm. Local maximum. No, only one point. I'll try to as estimate is is as 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 good as you can. Um, I'm not going to, because it's not you try, so there's no penalty here. So I see this is my local maximum. That's right there, right? 
it looked like um negative one point eight. Huh? Is it half? Is the middle okay? Negative one. Okay, negative one point five. Just eyeballing it. That's why I don't. I don't let you do this for you try. Uh, yo, you try. We all integer. So negative one point five, and then what? One. Uh, let me specify. Here is is a point. But uh, here are what? Interval. So it's two different things, right? So be careful. I know the notation is kind of similar. Local minimum. I would say values. Local minimum. How many minimums do you see? Two, right? Uh, some people say, okay, be, be me because it's minimum, so I'm just going to pick the lowest point. You're right. It is the remember what I say, mean global. I'm not saying global, right? So, global, the minimum will be this is the lowest point on the graph. But local mean what I want you to look at the segment, not the whole graph. So, there are two this interval that one minimum, this interval, there's another one. Right? So, two again, eyeball it. I would say negative 2.7 for the first one. Negative 2.7 comma negative 1.2. If you do negative 1.3, that's fine. Um, and then another one is 0 0.3. Um, let's say 0 0.2 comma negative 7. Points. So far, so good. On the exam, I, I hope they, 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 I don't think they're going to do this because it's just harder for us to grade. It's going to be industry. If they do this, I'll, I'll protest out that. It's hard for me to grade. Uh, could everybody have different answer? And no one's right or no one's wrong. Increase in interval. Before I do, let, let's, let's, let's highlight which, which one. Which one is decreasing and in decreasing? Um, let's do increasing first. You know, let's do both. So decreasing, I'll use, it, I'll use blue. So decreasing right there and go to the one of the minimum. And then it start increasing again. And we start decreasing again. I suggest you use color. And we start increasing again. Okay, if you look at those blue and red graphs, can you tell me? What interval is decreasing? Let's do the decrease the blue one first. It looked like go from negative infinity up to yeah, negative two something, right? Uh two negative two seven or two something. It doesn't matter. Um and then what else? And then from there it go what? It start increasing, right? It start increasing from from there up to here and it stop and it's decreasing again from here up to 0 0.2 and then from 0 0.2 it's increasing you can see it so first the first step I did was I highlight the decreasing increasing junk and then the next step, I determine the interval. When I say interval, you want to look at the x-axis. So increasing, let's see, increasing from, increase will be the red one. Increase from negative 2.7. Just match up with a point. Again, you do have negative 0.5, that's five by me. Uh, up to negative 1.5. And then what else? From 0 0.2, right? Comma infinity. In between, you need to put union.
Do we have any questions? Yeah. Include, include? No, no, I didn't include. Because, you, because um, yeah, because because at that point, yeah, it's the minimum, the maximum, it's, it's, not, it's not increasing nor decreasing. So we say I leave it alone. They call product inflection in, in calculus. That, that's why we don't use uh, brackets. <laughs> Just remember on the exam, if you hear increasing interval, decreasing interval, never use bracket, okay? Only domain and range. Decreasing interval. Can someone tell me what's the decre in decreasing interval? To, let's say negative 2.7 because we don't include we don't include negative 2.7 we can include we can write like that right it's not included and then what else um yeah mm -hmm. negative 1.5 to 0 0.2 i know there's numbers there like oh this is negative 2.7 they've kind of included in both but in mathematics sense, they're not included. There's a parenthesis. Is there a constant interval? No, right? So you say no. Oh, none. You say none. Can you do something like this on the exam? I promise it'll be in a chair. Is if anything, it make my job easier. Average rate of change. How many people here commute to, to school? Commute, yeah, right. You drive to school, you don't live on campus. Not many. I was expect more. Now when I when I was at U of M, mostly like they, they live in, on campus. Um but but OU is a commute school, communal school. Uh, which is good. Um You say your parents to save some money. Average rate of change is um is the uh, is the quantity changes relative to change in the input quantity. Now say if you drive from your home to OU, and I ask you what is your average speed, what do you do? You take what? So I ask you what is your average speed? I'm gonna be no all bar is the average rate, average speed. You're going to take the distance, right? It's going to be delta y over delta x, right? So distance between OU and your home. Let's say your home, I'm going to start distance at your home is zero minus distance from OU is to say 20 miles. And then how long do you it take from, from you? From, how long it take for you to drive here? Um, let's say 30 minutes. So you take the local road. So you start drive from home, that's zero minute, zero minute or zero hour zero minute, um, let's do hour. So 0.5, 30 minutes is half an hour. And right there, 20 over 0.5 is 40 mile per hour. So on average, you you drive 40 mile per hour from your home to OU. Uh, that's, uh, of course, you, of course uh, you don't drive 40 mile per hour all, everywhere, right? Because when you see red light, you stop, right? Uh, you know, when you're on highway, you speed up, things like that. And that's for calculus. Calculus, they calculate your rate at instantaneous uh, moment, right? at that moment. For, for algebra, they just kind of do the average. Um, it's not helpful. I, I, I guess it's helpful in some sense, but it's not helpful if you want to take a look at the um, smaller picture. So average rate is the delta y over delta x. It means f of b, think of it as your y2 minus f of a is your y1 over b minus a is x2 minus x1. What, what does this remind you of? Yeah, slow. So this is the same thing as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's just slow. So average rate of change is slow. 
My end is not very good. So let's take a look at 6B. I want to calculate the average rate of change from negative 4 to 0. So negative 4 is your x2. And 0 is your x1. What is, I, I, need, I need y2 and y1, right? So what's y2? Yeah, you plug in negative 4 into the function, right? Uh, 3. Yeah. Everybody see that? F of negative four is three. Four and the height is three. And then y one. Zero. And x is zero with the function. Two. F of e minus F A. Plug it in. I don't really do that, so I don't make a mistake on the air, um, the negative with the negative. So F of B, which is Y two, which is three. Uh, y one is negative two. B is X two, which is negative four. A is x1, which is 0. 3 plus 2 is 5 over negative 4. Bless you. Is there any questions? The only mistake I think you're gonna make is, uh, you might make is uh, arithmetic. You try to. Um, another another terminology for average rate of change is they call that the slope of a secant line. The slope of a secant line is like this. If I have a function, that's a function. Oh, sorry. You wanna? Um, this will stop other screen sharing. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. If I have a line. That line is the slope, and they call that that's the average rate of change, right? And they, so here the the first point here the second point. So here I call um x one y one. Here's x two y two, and then I ask you what is the slope? What is the slope of those two points? You draw a line, and then you can do what rise over run, or you can use a formula, right? Doesn't matter. Now that is called the secant line. That line is called the secant line. In calculus, there's another line called tangent line. Um, it is a slope, but it's different kind of slope. It's, it, it's the derivative, it's instantaneous rate. Remember I talk about instantaneous rate, right? So imagine the x, imagine those two points get closer and closer to each other. Get very, very close to the point that is kind of combined to one point. And now I'm gonna draw my slope. And this point, this line right here, they call the tangent line. It's just a heads up for calculus. Okay. You don't have to know that. But the secret line is what we've studied right now, by right? average rate of change. Objective three B is um is is application. I want to know, so the table below is the temperature in Fahrenheit observed by me meteorologists on a spring day. Um, by the way, if, if you want to go for, um, you know, people who actually try to study weather, you need a lot of math. <laughs> uh, it's a good pay career. I think it's cool. Uh, if I were to go back, I might consider that career. Um, it's pretty cool. You get to travel. 
you get to um you know do a lot of exper experiments <clears throat> I want to know the temperature. I want to know the average rate of change of the temperature between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. So 11 a.m. will be your, what kind of value? X, one or two. From 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So it's the first point, right? So, um, so you start 11 a.m., so that's your X1. And you end at uh, two p.m. So that's like two. Uh, what is what is y y one? At eleven a.m., what is the temperature? This mean f of eleven. So at eleven a.m. is fifty. Thank you. And then y two is f of two. At two p.m. is sixty six. F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Or you can do Y2 minus Y1 over F2 minus X1. F of B is, which is Y2, which is 66, minus 50, divided by 2. Um, um, I... I Instead of two, I'm gonna call. Um, I'm gonna let x one equal zero. Is that okay? Because that's my starting point. I'm gonna let this equal zero. From eleven a.m. to two p.m., how many hours are there? Three hours. And I'll tell you why. I'll do that. I'll tell you why I'll do that. So 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 three minus zero. Six, 66 minus 50 is 16 divided by 3. Leave it like that. <clears throat> I need to do that some more. I'll tell you why. Now, if you plug in 2 for x2 and then 11 for x1, you get negative in the denominator, yes? That means what? You have a positive on the top, negative on the bottom. Overall, you have a negative slope. Negative slope means what? Temperature decreasing or increasing? Decreasing. Is it increasing or decreasing? <laughs> increasing, right? So you always let, so for this problem like this application, you let the first point be your zero. And then you count from there. Similar? Please practice that. <clears throat> One more and then we'll be done. One more problem and uh, yeah, one more problem and we'll be done, I think. Or two more. Two more. The last one you do you at home. Um or two more. Oh maybe three more. <laughs> I like sorry. Uh number number eight. Objective two C. A driver of a of a car stop for gas. He looked at his watch and the time he read exactly 3.40 p.m. At this time, he started pumping gas into the tank. At exactly 3.44 p.m., the tank was full and he noticed he had pumped 10.7 gallons. So I'm going to denote 3.40 p.m. will be what? You guess it. What is that? X1, which is start at zero. My time start at zero, right? And then I'm start counting. I, he, he, finished, he finished pumping gas at... 344. So how many minutes later? Four. So X2 is four. What is my Y1? Zero, right? There's no, there's no gallon coming into it yet. So, so this imply Y1 is also zero. What about Y2? Yeah. Can you can you plug it in? Find the average rate of the flow of the gasoline into the gas tank. So I'm going to call uh, R. You don't have to. You don't have to. It's, it's nice if you call it R. Um, y2 minus Y1. X2 minus X1. Or F of B minus F of A. Same thing. Over B minus A. 10.7 minus 0 divided by 4 minus 0. 
what you got? What do you have for answer? 2.6, 75, thank you very much. Um, what is my unit? Mm -hmm. Don't forget this is like one point. Oh, by the way, um, you try last Friday, you try two that I asked you to do at home. After watching the video, I give everybody two point out of two points. My intention was to let you to get you to watch the video. <laughs> no, you try. I can just give it for you for free. Um, of course, I didn't tell you that, but because I need you to watch the video. But everybody got two points. And and by the way, don't ask me for makeup you try. It's not like I'm mean. I didn't want you to have makeup you try. It's just when I reset it, every it, it lose everybody's answer. So um. And I'm gonna drop at least five you try at the end. I'm thinking 10, uh, but I gotta see how my call is. <laughs> but at least five, okay? Yes. Yeah, there's more, there's more. Are we not done yet? We still have uh, four minutes to go. Okay, uh, number 10, real quick. Number 10, oops, sorry. Number 10, we look at the function f of x equal 4x minus 2 between x equal negative 5 and x equal 10. They want to find the average rate of change. So, well, you have x1 there, you have x2 there, but you don't have y1, y2 yet. All you have to do is what? Plug in the 5 and the 10, right? To find the y2 and y1. So they did that, and they, they, they find y2 is 38, and then y1 is 4, negative 22. They plug into the formula, average rate of change, they got four. Now, the number 10 asks you, what is the relationship between average rate of change, foul above, and the slope of the line? They're the same, right? They're the same. Like I said, average rate of change is the slope. <clears throat> the same. All right, last one, and we'll, we'll be done. Now we can try it again. Uh, find the average rate of change for the function f of x equal negative 2x squared plus 6x minus 1 from x to x plus h. So think of it is, so I, I know that f of x is negative 2x plus 6x minus 1. I want to know what is f of x plus h. What do you do? You replace x with x plus h, right? So negative two something squared plus six times something minus one. This is x plus h. Um, I, I see a few students do this. They square the x, they square the h, just a few of you. Don't do that, okay? You're not no longer a 662 or 661 student. Um, there's no partial credit. What, for those that kind of mistake. So you're gonna foil it out. You should have three terms. So negative two times, if you foil it out, you have x squared plus two x h plus h squared. Distribute the six, I have six x plus six h, and then minus one. Distribute the negative two, negative two x squared plus two x h. I'm sorry, negative, it should be negative. Yeah, yes, yes. Four, thank you. Let me rewrite number four. Uh, minus two h squared plus six x plus six h minus one. All right, we're done with f of x plus h. Now we need to find the average rate of change. Now we need that. It's gonna be f of B minus F of A over B minus A. What's F of B? F of X plus H, right? So that whole thing we just did. So we write that negative 2X squared minus 4XH minus 2A squared plus 6X plus 6H minus 1 minus F of A. F of A is your F of X. So minus that whole function, the, the blob. I call it blob. Uh, when I subtract a function, can I change the size? 
be on my slope. So negative 2x squared plus 6x minus 1 over b minus a. b is x plus h minus a is x. This one, this one, cancel. Um, I don't want to rewrite the whole thing. Can I distribute and change the size here? Is that okay? So remove the, the parentheses. So everything changes its size. So plus, minus, plus. Oh, you can do one more step. This is my favorite part right here. Um, this one, this one, cancel. What else? 6x and negative 6x. Negative 1, positive 1. What's left? 4hh minus 2h squared plus 6h over h. Can I factor out the h? 4x minus 2h plus 6 divided by h. And then last cancellation, 4x minus 2h plus 6. For these kind of problems, you should not have h on the bottom. That means you're doing right. You try and then we're done. Number 12, you do try three. I have office hour today from uh, 3 30 from 3 to 3 30 if you have questions please come up and ask okay you're all welcome I like that uh, Have a good one and see you Friday. My Zoomer, I'll be done here. Have a good one and I'll see you Friday. <laughs>